broadcast live. Be out chair with uh, Fifi Cooper. Yeah. Hello, my lady. No, how no, you no. doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are it's you? It's been a minute. I know. You I'm know? happy to be here. I mean, like, uh, you know, it's like you were there, 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 you know, and then you were there, there, there. <laughs> Where did you go? Wait, what happened? Um, crazy thing is I feel like I've, I didn't leave the game, you know? I just grew more into more than an artist. Now I run a record label, so I share my time, you know. Yeah. You know, so it's a different type of story, but mentally I would like to say that I'm back. Yeah. Um yeah. obviously the most yeah. it says a lot <laughs> back. Physically. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um I've been just working on myself and also learning the industry fully. Yeah. You know. So I think um that also took a lot of my time. COVID came through. I wanted to drop earlier. Um, uh, but obviously we had COVID and you know, we had to change our plans and, you know, everything. But now, um, we're here. I mean, the one thing that I I, I kind of um, picked up, you know, uh, in the new way you kind of showed up with the press, yeah. is the, like, Love & Hip Hop literally got, like, some of the most, uh, I'd say, Oh, I wasn't expecting people. Interesting. You know, to be honest, you know what I, I mean? know. How did you make that call? How did you end up getting there? Who called you? How did that happen? Um, they actually called me. I think around last year, August. Um, they asked me to come through to the studio, just you know, young interview, and I was like, you know, let me just try it out because I believe that everything happens for a reason, and God's timing is perfect for me. And when they gave me that call, I knew that I'm going to be part of the cast because there's definitely something different that I'm bringing yeah. to the industry um, as a whole. You know, being Mozoko's first lady for like 15 years, um, it, 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 it's a lot, yeah. uh, you know. Um, so it, it was quite weird, but I was super excited because um, I've always been a fan of love and hip hop. So for the fact that out of USA it came to South Africa, for me it's a big deal. I needed to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is. A, it is almost like a, when I think love and hip hop, I think like scandal. I think this. I think drama. Yeah, drama. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, cool. What, what a way to come back. And then obviously you dropped your single. Yeah. Um. um okay, okay. Uh, a week after Nge, right? Yeah. Um, so how long have you been cooking? How long have you been in? Because I'm, I'm just curious, you know, it's like, I'm just thinking like, wh I know I asked what have you been doing, but I'm like, how long have you been holding the songs, you know, and and what has been your rollout plan? Did you hold back when you knew that you were going to be on Love and Hip Hop and said, mm -hmm. I'm going to marry them together? What, what has been the process? Crazy. Like, the reason why I say God's timing is always perfect. Um, it's because love and hip-hop came at a time where I was ready to drop. Yeah. I've been working on the album for almost two years. Um, I have about 46 tracks that I've recorded, so I need to cut down to 15, 16 for the album. So there's a lot of work that, you know, I have. Um, specifically with the song that I dropped, um, it's a song that we did last year. And for me, it was important because I feel like Lua is as first lady of Ngabi and Linna, the first lady of Motuako. Um, together, it's powerful because I like the fact that she's introducing me to the Zulu culture. You know, I'm learning a lot from her as well. And I also want to show, you know, young girls out there that uh, it's possible for girls to come together and, you know, um, work uh, because there's been this stigma in the industry where girls are supposed to compete all the time because we are in a male-dominated industry so we've never really seen girls really coming together especially in the hip-hop industry it's always that thing mm. you know social media has made it like that and i just really wanted to have two girls uh, um, as much as i'm also a singer She's also a talented singer. We can come together vocally, and I can also stand out as a rapper as well and give people, you know, beautiful music. I mean, what was the situation like? You are speaking 
Mavtown Mutsuako. You know what? I love Mutsuako. You know, I love what, uh, Mutsuako. What is happening in the studio? How are you I guys love Mutsuako because Mutsuako allows me, because the definition of Mutsuako is a mixture. Yeah. So even on the song, Mulaining ye wani, Kibuasi Zulu Swanaka Nagu wani ker barring yeke. Yeah. There's yeah. two languages. Yeah, of course. And you know, that's what I love uh, because now. Um, we are spreading our wings and um, introducing language Yarona to people who are not from South Africa. They will be interested to know, Kore, what's that? What's that language? What's that language? So um, it was crazy. And I'm happy that now that I'm fully myself and I'm free, um, when I'm in studio, I can be me. Mm. You know, there's no one saying, I, ish, Oscar, Bar, Uri. Obviously, I'm not Zulu, but yeah. but wa, Mama Zulu, they will be happy that I'm actually trying, yeah, you know, yeah. to to understand and learn, you know, culture or no language So, um, it's 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 a beautiful song. I trust me. Talking about being free, you know, um, you've also got like uh, obviously you've got your own label and you've got your own music that you're doing. Yeah. But like, in this space from your whole journey musically, how different is the music from where you started? How different is what you're saying from when you were starting getting into the getting into the music game? I think the Fifi now is the Fifi the Fifi the Fifi you know, mm. I am back in that element where I am creatively comfortable you know, and um, b when I was signed, obviously, Negezamaga agenda ya label. If they have this idea, that's what I have to do. It's like Spani. Yeah. You know, nine to five, you have yeah. to be at work and Kafa if you watch it. It was like that when I was signed. I know that when I'm in studio, the song is not gonna drop until that man says, I'm happy. Yeah. You know, right now, nobody say nothing. It's yeah. fully Fifi, and I'm happy because now people are going to actually get to know the real me. Yeah. Do you feel, though, maybe in some of the guidance where you're kind of working with somebody else that goes, OK, work on this, do you think that like it also pushed you to be better at times, you know? Um, I mean, there's one thing someone might go, yeah, you know, I have to wait for that man. But did it sometimes push you to be better? and? And if it did, like, what are you taking from that? How, where's your, who's the new person that you're bouncing through? Obviously, you're the boss now, mm -hmm. but who's the new person that you're bouncing to push you? Because sometimes, you know, when someone goes, no, it's not coming out until mm -hmm. they're actually helping you to make a better song, Trust, you know? Yeah. I won't lie, there's a lot that I learned, especially um, with some of the songs that I did and when they were guiding me, I could actually see. Um, before when I was recording, I was making music for myself and they've taught me that music is not just for me. If I'm going to make music, I must also think, Hore, wagai, target market again, kibua libo man, you know, and um, what is the song about? So there is a lot that I definitely learned, but I did lose myself somewhere along the line. You can guide me, but don't fully change me. Mm, yeah. mm. But who's who, who within your camp now? Who's still? Because creativity it doesn't matter what level you are. Mm -hmm. Even Rihanna's got someone Trust that's going. Me. Yeah. This is you know who, like who's that now right now that's giving you that guidance because it's still an energy that gets you better, right? Yeah. Um. Right now, if I'm working on a song with a producer, I understand that it's our song, so we need to work on it together. Yeah. So, I allow whoever that who's on the song to have their two cent. If I feel like, oh, no, Mary, instead of doing this chorus this way, let's do this. We try it, you know? And now we don't pay studio time, we got our own studio, so we can work on a song for two, three days. And as long as at the end of the day, we are all happy, I think that's what's important. Yeah. People forget that the EFF came out to help you out. Yeah, yeah like uh, when you're going through your stuff, you know? Yeah. It's like, I guess the Fifi there is for eight, the FF. <laughs> yeah, you must move those two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, when you got that kind of support, when you were going through everything you were going through, I mean, what was, how did that make you feel? Like, I can imagine just being a woman um, in the industry, you might feel like, okay, cool, I'm drowning. But when you start getting that kind of support, you know, um, what does that say about you and your work, you know, from your head? 
I was ready to pack my bags and move back to my town mm. before the EFF came through for me. And as soon as they came through for me, I knew that God still wants me to be here. You know, there's still a purpose for me. There's still something that I need to do for the industry, for the game. There's a lot of people that I'm inspiring, not even being away. So that help actually made me realize that you might think that you are alone, but trust me, people are watching and there's people who are wishing you all the best and they will do anything and everything to help you out to make sure that you succeed and get where you want to get. So I will always be grateful for them fighting for me, fighting for my freedom. Because at the end of the day, the songs that they fought for Khorkidi Performe, those are the songs still or when I step on stage, people ask for them. Mm -hmm. I can drop new songs, but there's people who knew Fifika Kisses, there's people who knew Fifika Shashela mm -hmm. So if I can't perform those songs that I've lost a big part of me. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it's just crazy. It's it's I'm very happy and grateful that I'm still yeah, man, that's incredible. What would you not do if you were Fifi um, coming up? And um, question two, what would you have done harder that you never did? What I could have done harder, um, I think what comes to mind would be not depending on anyone. Mm. I lost um, a lot of my time depending on people and validation. Mm. I remember when I first met you, <laughs> your validation Yeah, because was I was so thing. scared. Like, yeah. I felt like I'm doing something wrong because I'm the first Motoko uh, female rapper. Yeah. You know, people are about to Motoko, they only think Jeba, Dukes, Marafe, yeah. you know, they don't think of a Fifi. So yeah. it was a scary moment for me to come out as the first, you know, female rapper to represent Bukoni Bupirim, especially Motoko, because it was big when I was literally coming out. So I wish I could have believed in myself more. And now when I do my workshops and talk to upcoming artists, I stress on that point where you don't need validation. If you believe in your craft and you're talented enough, know that God gave you the talent for a reason. You know, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So, yeah. They were always leaders in the Matuaka world um, at the time that you started. And there's one thing when you're looking for validation, but there's another thing when you know yourself. Which relationships do you feel that like um, with artists that you feel that like uh, we could, I could have mended this or this could have been better, or this is the type of, this is where this relationship could have went, you know? I don't know, it's crazy, man. You know, as a female rapper, not even a female rapper, a female artist, um, one of the biggest challenges is the fact that sometimes you work with people where they expect something back from you, you know. Uh, not musically, but sexually, because even when I came out, you know, <laughs> you know, because also I've had a lot of people telling me, because I'm a girl, how I should dress. I'm not appealing to the market because and what. So I had to be strong and understand that there will be people by Longhore they work with me because they believe in me. And there will be people by Longhore they work with me because they just want something, you know, from me. Yeah. And um Knowing that, Nji, I know as soon as I, you know, even if it's a contract or it's a studio session, I put it out there, it's like, I don't know, I don't know, I feel like, yeah. Mm. That's crazy. Uh, that's why you kind of build your own studio. Trust me, I had to. 